recently yeah, as a student of music, I decided to do this out of curiosity. I grew up listening to Fela. I got interested in uh, the ability to mix music and I never did anything with it. Really, you don't set out as a young kid that you grow up and say, oh, I want to become a DJ when I grow up. Nobody at, at my own time had that mindset. You understand what I'm saying? I think now people do, but then it wasn't something that kids look up to and say, I want to be a DJ when I grow up. You don't even go to your parents to say that. They probably disown you. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about this. I'm excited to meet new people. Everything that makes Afrobeats Afrobeats what it is today. I'm looking at this from a DJ's perspective. My dad was a DJ, actually. He also DJed a while, being a college professor. Saw him play a lot of vinyl, a lot of fella. I listened to that growing up and in high school. Because of my love for music, I did a lot of, I used to mix tapes for my friends. They give me some money, so I found a way to uh, make friends with DJs who are professional of their craft. I knew I got new songs and I just make mix tapes and that's how I made some extra dough back in the day. Afro Beats lives here with DJ Who Be Dad. Many years later, after different live experiences, I got excited about how Afro Beats is all over the place now and uh, being curious, I wanted to hear from Nigerian DJs especially about what they were playing, what they were listening to back in the day, where that transition phase started, where we moved from listening to a lot of hip hop R&Bs to creating our own style of music that we want to hear, that we like to hear, that the world is interested in listening to, that we're sharing with the world. I saw this big stage and there was a female DJ, she saw her doing like, also, are you saying a girl can up high and control people down? And it felt godlike. I tried telling everybody that I wanted to learn to DJ, and that was where the journey started. Each DJ has a story. They are really instrumental in how your song gets played, right? Your parties, the radio DJ on the radio, the producer DJ who's producing the beats, right? So everybody, all the DJ, the whole DJ community has a hand in how popular for beats is on today. For me, this is a learning experience and I want to learn this style, this story and share with the world. So I hope you join me on this journey. Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. It's a beach type of weather. It's a good feeling. Talking to DJ Jimmy Jat is one of the pioneer DJs here in Nigeria. I like to call him Godfather. He doesn't think he's that. He's very humble. He's a great guy. I'm hoping to, you know, talk to him about his trajectory, his story, where he started from, how he got here, and what he thinks the next steps are for Afrobeat. Cool DJ Jimmy Jat. You were the only DJ I knew in Nigeria. That was the only name that I knew. Oh, wow. And to know that um, you know, you're recognized worldwide. But there were loads of DJs before me, though. Really? And there were, there were loads of DJs at about the same time I came up as well. Really? Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. Now it's today. Is a Nigerian. I had these other ones that always partying back then, so they just I picked interest in music through them, and that, that was how the DJ thing started sometime in Nigeria. We're spinning more foreign RBs and rap. The 90s, we had some artists like Blackie, Wilson. In 99, when Remedy dropped Shakomo, the ability to be able to infuse that local lyrics with mm. the MC Light instrumental. And that song became big in you know, all the universities and all the wave that was happening then. I think sometime in 99, when we started democracy, uh, we should give the government that, that credit. They made that law that we should 
all radio stations should be playing 60% of local content. Though all those years in 2000, 2001, 2002, uh, 3, the radio stations were, they were doing it, but the problem they had less songs content. To play on air. Mm. But when the likes of Mavens and other artists now came, that tribe, Dr. C, Shasha, Kaboom, Freestyle, and they are good. We started having content, so you don't have an option. You must play more of Afrobeat in our radio station. So the radio stations is more like they are compelled to do more of Afrobeat. And you know, something you hear every day, you don't have an option, you start liking it. That, that was just part of it. <laughs> During um, 2007, okay. all those times, there were no controllers, there were only turntables, mm. no, no, um, no computers, just CDs, mm. you know, just just CDs and use all those big tape before everything starts coming so easy. I think Afropay, you know, itself um, was steamed up from high life big ups people like fella and nicola absolutely rest in peace you know who was one of the people who originated afrobeat big ups from ghana from other african countries south africa the plantation boys the remedies big ups to dj jimmy jack you know he's also someone you know who actually um, promoted afrobeat big ups to dj neptune Swan Top Boss and uh, DJ Humility. Right. You know, those are way back DJs. Yep. You know, they started, you know, and helped so many other mm -hmm. upcoming DJs too. MTV Base came in 2005 and big ups to the young stars Whiskey, DeVito, Bonner Boy, Emaya Baga, Nato C. Flavor even came in, Nabanya. You know, with the highlight mixed with Afrobeat, you know, it's just so awesome. 2007, look at the likes of Juan de Cole, you know, the way music is going right now in Nigeria. Big ups to Don Jazzy is actually worked so hard, you know, helping so many people and, you know, Lakbaja, yep. you know, people like that, they, they made the in in industry, you know, amazing for people to be able to, you know, connect and listen to great music, you know, and you know, it's it's something that really helped the youth. Yeah, brand new joke in production. It's official. Come on. And the music where we play we do it. At the time, the, you know, we were seen as a, uh, um, it's a wannabe, like a copycat, you know, like as a Nigerian trying to do supposed American music. So nobody was buying into that, yeah. So it got to a point we started looking at, you know, how can we make this, I mean, indigenous to us, but still, I mean, it's not my fault that I grew up listening to hip hop, I grew up right. listening to R&B, but that's, that's the ma major influence I had musically, right. aside listening to, Nigerian indigenous songs like Sonia De, I like, I mean, you know, Fuji and everything, you know. So what you then start to look at is how do you blend those, you know, music form that influenced you, you know, and it's a lot of hip hop, a lot of uh, R&B, a lot of Nigerian music at that time, the Juju, they have, um, the Juju, the Fuji and everything. So how do you blend that? to make it a bit more appealing to your, right. your immediate audience, you know. So we started experimenting with that as young talent. And the result of that was, you know, rapping in Pigeon mostly, rapping in Pigeon. I think that's where it started from. Then in, that, in terms of the instrumentation, trying to infuse, pretty much it was hip hop, mostly hip hop beats, but trying to infuse some samples from all our own music at that time, the, you know, mostly uh, Afrobeat and Af uh, Afrobeat by Fela, and yeah. then Afrobeat generally, music generally around here, you know. So you're infusing that into a lot of the hip hop influence that you grew up on. You understand what I'm saying? And then the sound started to 
you know, form some kind of, this is different from everything, you know, but it's a little, it's a, it's a bit of sound from everywhere, including even dance up. And of course, delivery now became our own style because if you're delivering mostly in Fijian, that's purely Nigerian, you know, so, but your influence was still Western, no doubt. You know? And then eventually, I think about mid 90s or towards the mid 90s, it started, you know, taking, becoming acceptable, you know, so you could, you could go to some parties. I mean, I started DJing in the 80s or late 80s, but at that time, you, you really don't play Nigerian music. Exactly. You really don't play Nigerian If you play Nigerian music, Nigerian, people are going to walk up to you and say, what's this trash you're playing? You understand what I'm saying, you know? So, but by the mid 90s or towards the mid 90s, you could smuggle, you could chip in one or two, you know, not so fantastically produce Nigerian songs, yeah. but at least acceptance was becoming. Yeah. So, so it was, it was the music was a, was getting some acceptance, but the quality of production wasn't exactly there yet. Yeah. So by the time I think it was the advent of CDs, to be honest with you, I think because before then we were strictly vinyl DJs. Then it was more of records that DJ were using the vinyl. Vinyl. Right, and our Nigerian songs you can hardly find them hmm. in that stuff. So I think we are, we are all compelled to play those songs. What was available to yeah, you? Was, because I had to go to Absolute Records, at and all those places to buy records and all that. Afrobeat make parties cut up. Playing in a party, and I notice uh, people are getting tired of a particular genre, either house or dancehall. The minute I introduce Afrobeat. The audience changes. You'll be shocked the amount of people that plug into um, Afrobeat. Uh, them vibing to Nigeria, to Afrobeat song, and it wasn't even played by a Nigerian DJ. Sing word for word. Because we're speaking over the world. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> How you doing, brother? Man? <laughs> I see you are killing it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Trying to be like you. <laughs> How you doing, man? Thank you for yeah. having me. I go by DJ Hubi Dad. That's my alias. That's my AKA. Chose that name, and I wear a mask for that reason because. I don't know if you're familiar with the artist called Lagbaja. He wears a mask. No one actually knows what he looks like except his friends. But he was a big artist that I looked up to back in the day. He played a lot of trumpet. He wore a mask. He wore, had a whole persona around him. You know, to me, that was Afrobeat. So that's where my story begins from. <laughs> 